Welcome to an introduction to solving first order linear homogeneous systems of ordinary differential equations. Recall in the previous lesson we learned we can write a first order system of ODEs as a vector equation in the form of x prime of t equals p of t times x of t plus f of t, where x of t, x prime of t, and f of t are vectored valued functions, and p of t is a matrix valued function. And now let's look at the theorem below on superposition. Let x prime equal p times x be a linear homogeneous system of ODEs. Recall this is homogeneous because f of t is equal to the zero vector. Suppose that x1 through xn are n solutions of the equation, and c1 through cn are any constants. Then x equals c1 times x1 plus c2 times x2, all the way through cn times xn is also a solution. Furthermore, if this is a system of n equations, and x1 through xn are linearly independent, then every solution x can be written in the form given by equation 3.2. Linear independence for vectored valued functions is the same idea for normal functions. The vectored valued functions x1 through xn are linearly independent when c1 times x1 plus c2 times x2 plus all the way through cn times xn equals a zero vector has only the solution c1 through cn equals zero, where the equation must hold for all t. One fact not mentioned in our textbook is that given x prime equals p times x, and p is an n by n matrix, such that x1 through xn are solutions to the differential equation, which again is a homogeneous system, if x is a matrix in which each column is a solution, then if the Ronskian doesn't equal zero, where the Ronskian is equal to the determinant of matrix x, then x1 through xn are independent and form a fundamental set of solutions to the differential equation, and the general solution can be expressed using the equation below. Now I do want to mention, here we're defining the Ronskian as a determinant of matrix x, where the columns of matrix x are the solutions. This is different from the definition of the Ronskian we used earlier in the course when determining if a set of functions is independent. Recall we defined the Ronskian as a determinant below where for the matrix, the first row were the functions in the set, and the subsequent rows were the derivatives. And now let's look at an example. Here we're given the vectored valued functions x1, x2, and x3. These three vectored valued functions are linearly dependent. Notice if we add x1 and x3, the sum is equal to x2. Or if we apply the definition, we have c1 times x1 plus c2 times x2, plus c3 times x3 equals a zero vector, which gives us the system of equations shown here on the right. Looking at the first equation, notice this indicates c1 must equal c3. So if we let c1 equal c3 equal one, for example, then if we let c2 equal negative one, the second equation is also satisfied, and we found a solution where c1, c2, and c3 are not all equal to zero, indicating the three vectored value functions are linearly dependent. On the other hand, if we change the example just slightly, for example, if we change x2 to zero t rather than zero one plus t, then the functions are linearly independent. Again, going back to our equation, c1 times x1 plus c2 times x2 plus c3 times x3 equals a zero vector, we now have the system of equations shown here on the right. In this case, if we let t equals zero, Notice the second equation indicates that c3 must equal zero, but then if c3 is equal to zero, and we go back to the first equation, we now have c1 t squared equals zero for all t, indicating c1 must equal zero. So if c1 and c3 are both equal to zero, and we go back to the second equation, we get c2 times t equals zero, which means c2 is also equal to zero. So here we have c1 equals c2 equals c3 equals zero, is the only solution, and x1 through x3 are linearly independent. The linear combination c1 times x1 plus c2 times x2, all the way through plus cn times xn, could also be written as x of t times vector c, where x of t is a matrix valued function where the columns are x1 through xn, and vector c is a column matrix with entries c1 through cn. Assuming that x1 through xn are linearly independent, the matrix valued function x of t is called a fundamental matrix or a fundamental matrix solution. So for the previous example, 
x of t would be the two by three matrix or matrix valued function shown below. And now let's revisit a system of ODEs that we solved back in section 3.1. We previously solved the system x1 prime equals x1 and x2 prime equals x1 minus x2 with initial conditions x1 of zero equals one and x2 of zero equals two. Let's consider this problem again using the language of this section. First, notice that because f of t is equal to the zero vector, we do have a homogeneous system, and we can write this system with initial conditions in matrix form as shown below. We have x prime equals matrix P times x. We also have x of zero equals the two by one matrix with one and two from the initial conditions. We found the general solution to be x1 equals c1 times e to the t, and x2 equals c1 divided by two e to the t plus c2 times e to the negative t. If we let c1 equal one and c2 equal zero, we obtain the solution where the vector valued function has entries e to the t and one half e to the t. And if we let c1 equal zero and c2 equal one, we obtain the vector valued function solution with entries zero and e to the negative t. These two solutions are linearly independent, as we can see by letting t equal zero, and noting the resulting constant vectors are linearly independent. In matrix notation, a fundamental matrix solution is x of t equals this two by two matrix valued function where the columns are from the two independent solutions that we found. To solve the initial value problem, we need to solve for vector c in the equation x of zero times vector c equals vector b. We're using x of zero because the initial conditions were given where t equals zero and vector b is the vector with components one and two, again because of the initial conditions. So when t is equal to zero, we have the two by two matrix shown here where the entries are one, zero, one half, one. And then we have times vector c equals the vector one, two. Solving the system on the right, we have c1 equals one and c2 equals three halves, and therefore vector c has components of one and three halves. And therefore our solution is the vector valued function x of t equals the matrix valued function x of t times vector c. And notice the solution does agree with the solution we found in section 3.1, which I've included in blue here on the right. I hope you found this helpful.